Hello, I'm John Sinclair. Welcome to the first local music podcast. The recordings come from a show that I present with Kevin Gorn on Hermitage FM in Colville. It's on every Tuesday between 6 and 7pm. You can listen locally on 99.2 FM or via their website, that's hermitagefm.com, or via apps like TuneIn Radio. On the very first show, we had the Midbeats live in the studio, showcasing some of their new material. my live gig in the studio right now because in session uh, tonight we've got the mid-beats and so now I'm going to do a song called What Do You Do? What do you do I? A bit of dusty pop for you. <laughs> you say to me Why don't you put your money in the bank and try to say Well that's alright if you've got money and if I've got to work, I'd rather take some little time to spend all my Well, tell me what to do with your spare change. Do you save it for a rainy day? Cause you can't take it with you when you die. But so you might as well just spend. You don't know. What you're supposed to do with it You buy things that'll make you happy But don't ever try to save Tell me what to do with all your change You save it for another day Cause you can't take it with you when it's your time or So you might as well just spend You don't know what you're supposed to do with it You buy things that'll make you happy But don't ever try to So buy everything that makes you happy Take all the time in the world With a ten pound note and a bunch of fibers They will take from you So don't be a stranger Call on the manager Watch him open the till Well no, you can't take it with you when you die So you might as well just spend all your time as well just spend well all your time so buy everything that makes you happy take all the time in the world with a ten pound note and a bunch of five that will take from you so don't be a stranger call on the manager watch him open the till well no you can't take it with you when you die so you might as well just spend Yes, you might as well just spend Yeah, yeah, yeah Oh, your dough Uh, live on Hermitage FM uh, with me, John Sinclair, featuring Kevin Gorn. It's a new local music show. Uh, that was called What Do You Do? And uh, I'm, during that, I was thinking, uh, we're recording this, actually, because we're going to be putting out a podcast of the show at the end of each month, at the end of August. Uh, in case you've enjoyed what you've heard, you can listen again. You never know. They may even put one of the tracks on a forthcoming CD. Hint, hint. Uh, I'll let them think about that. OK, uh, they're going to carry on now with another song. This is called uh, uh, Don't You Ever Feel. Okay. I, you know I always want to be there For you I always want to be there So don't 
You're not good enough for me Because I Sometimes I can't help my behaviour But unfortunately you get to see it yeah, yeah. So don't you, don't you ever feel No, don't you ever feel No, don't you ever feel That the world is upside down You're not good enough for me Because I know you worry about your reputation Gonna let you know you'll always be right here yeah. So don't you know you ever feel No, don't you ever feel No, don't you ever feel That the world is upside down And you're not good enough for me
Uh, Broken Town from uh, Beneath the Lights, and I'm glad to say that, uh, well, most of the band uh, join me in the studio. We haven't got Sam because he's working down the road, apparently. Uh, we've got Brandon, Joe and Harry. Uh, Joe, uh, you were saying just there, the first time you've heard that track on, on big speakers and it sounded better than you thought it did. Yeah, since we recorded it, like, bec- I don't own, like, a massive PA system or anything like that. So, uh, like, literally hearing the bass like that rather than just through Trebly laptop speakers, it... It's impressed me again, actually. But, uh, tell us about the recording process. What do you remember of it? Uh, basically, we recorded with a guy called Jamie. I can't remember his surname, though. And uh, we co- recorded it in High Street in Leicester, um, a li- little recording studio above, like, a little karate uh, studio kind of thing. And that's where we recorded the drums and part of the bass. And then the next day, we went to his house, and then that's where we recorded the guitars and the vocals because his house is in the middle of a nowhere, and he just has, like, a little studio. And it was absolutely incredible. We loved it. And All right, the, for and, some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the mixing, did that take very long? Yeah, he did He did that at a separate time. He did, like, because we did just two days in a row. So he mixed that night, and then, like, he mixed it and then gave it us, and then we sent him back what we'd like to change, and then he he did it, and it sounds incredible, and we've got to thank him for it. <clears> and uh, Brandon's come into us. Tell us about Brandon's age. Brandon could probably explain. How did you get involved in the band? Um, well, basically what happened was I was having guitar lessons with a guy down at the guitar workshop in Ipswich, uh called Darren Jones. And Sam, that's in the band, he used to be a student of Darren's, and he had told Darren that the band were looking for a new guitarist and so Darren told me that it's my kind of music so I should go try out and I went for the audition with the lads and they must have liked what they heard and yeah they was, it, was that quite nerve-wracking going for an audition like that though? yeah it was the first time I'd ever <laughs> had to do anything like that so it's pretty weird for a start off but they must have just the lads must have just liked what they heard and so, so what did you lads do did you kind of like uh, Harry just kind of sit back and think well you know uh, what do we think do we look serious or do we smile or <laughs> what sort of face did you have one do you think uh well, it's hard to say, really. Um, but he, he obviously had the, the talent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we sort of just played through a few songs all together, had to listen to what he'd, um, uh, how his voice was, because we, we wanted uh, a guy who could sing as well as uh, play guitar. And then uh, he played a few uh, gigs after that, and then we said, yeah, we'd... We definitely want you. Yeah, kept I mean, him in. I mean, I last saw you at uh, Glaston Budget, didn't I, in, in the big top stage. And I know it didn't go exactly to plan because you got cut a bit short because of technical issues, I think, as well. Yeah. But how much energy did you use? How? Because you just bounce around. <laughs> all, I mean, you just uh, seem to use all your energy in uh, the whole time. It's good though. I, I, it's a natural thing, obviously, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I've always sort of uh, said to myself, like, I can't really enjoy music quite as much as if I'm just stood still I have to move about it's a natural reaction yeah um, uh, I think that gig I I think I ran out of energy around about halfway through the second song or something and then the rest was just adrenaline and (laughs) Just trying to push but, through but, it. But Joe, does he ever play wrong notes because he's bouncing around? Do, no. do you ever notice that? No, he's an absolutely well, he's an absolutely incredible bassist. He never makes a mistake. But however, he does fall over from time to time <laughs> <laughs> over, <laughs> over over his leads. And like uh, as a musician, in one of our songs, "The Usual Disaster," just before the breakdown, uh, these three Sam. Harry and Brandon all jump up at the same time just before we go into it and because the musician's ceiling's quite low yes it is Yeah, it, his bass head hit yeah. the top of the ceiling and, and he about knocks Sam and Brandon out all the time <laughs> yeah. on the small, smaller stage yeah the smaller the stage the more me and Sam have to make sure that we look out for him when he's jumping he's around he's definitely and a health and safety hazard. and I think <laughs> Sam uh, I mean, to be fair Sam I think he's grown in confidence singing wise as well as he he certainly really I thought was very effective at Glastonbury yeah he started coming up uh, with a couple of like remedies to look after his voice better like before a gig he drinks like black tea and honey and oh, he's really? get, it, it tastes really nice doesn't it Brandon? yeah he's passing on these herbal remedies what he's got to me now and he's making me do the same like yeah, these right. warm-ups and everything and uh, we're going to talk about gigs because uh, he's obviously having to work hard with his voice and so are you really aren't you uh, yeah. uh, Brandon because you've got lots of gigs coming up part of the reason you're here is I notice you, you're doing your Glaston Budget audition this Friday at the shed yeah we're we're absolutely amazing that we got accepted to audition again because like it's we love the festival, don't yeah, we? Yeah, I mean, if we manage to get in this time, it'll be the fourth year in a row that we've been playing. I uh, la- uh, This year, it wasn't last year, last year's audition, but this year's festival, we managed to play it um, in the second main stage, the Big Top, 
which we were just absolutely over the moon with. Yeah, because I was looking after uh, uh, the, the icon stage, which is the one I saw you on, I think, originally, the, the one outdoors. It was good fun, actually, looking after a stage, because, you know, get to see bands kind of first-hand and yeah. have a little chat with them. But I was pleased for you being in the inside and uh, if it rains it's very helpful for you isn't it? yeah and we, and we were glad you came over and see, seen us to get a cd yeah, i was trying to get gaps in my schedule so i can nip over yeah yeah you were you were just there for the weekend as well weren't you really i was there uh, i was there the whole weekend but i could try and pick and choose how i went to see outside of the icon stage as well yeah um but gig wise you've got a, a list of stuff coming up uh i mean how is this kind of how do you put this together uh, well, my dad uh, does a lot of the work for us, and basically he asks uh, whether we... He's your, like your assistant manager. He, he's an, our actual manager. Yeah. And, uh, Sorry, what's his name? You can't just call him Dad. Dave, David Turner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, so he's or, probably or, listening. So or, or tip Dave, out to his well, friends. I, I think <laughs> I know David as well. But yeah, good job, because somebody's got to do that, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, I used to, but like, I had schoolwork, and it was putting a lot of pressure on me to get in contact. Like, yeah, Har- come, on, ha- come on, Dad. Har- yeah. Harry's, <laughs> Harry's pretty useless so, uh, oh. to, in, in terms of contacting people. But uh, <laughs> yeah, my dad's doing an absolutely brilliant job for us. So we're going to play another track, Changes. Where are you with the recording cycle? I guess you're going to get the gigs out of the way and then you can focus on that again, right? Yeah, well, uh, basically we we recorded these two tracks and we released them in February and since then we've been promoting these tracks kind of thing. And we've just just wrote our new song, True or False, we've played it live a couple of times now and it's like, we, we really enjoy playing it and we've just wrote another one but we've not actually tried it out yet so we're, we're trying to get like six tracks kind of together for more more of an album me kind of thing because we've just done double singles and four tracks in the past so so where where can people get um, i presume they can buy them on cd if they come to the geese but can they download them as well yeah it's, it's on Bandcamp. the link's on our facebook page and yeah 50 p a track or and it's pretty good actually, quid, quid for a physical copy and like it's it's really good and you get a free wristband if we've got any left so you feel like you're kind of moving on to the next recording session but you lots of gigs lots of energy to use it's going to take a while it'll probably be christmas time or after before we record again and what's the writing process like for you then is uh, who's behind that um well we all try and chip in a bit i think it's uh whoever has the idea um and whoever can uh, sit down and write i mean um joe and sam do a lot of the lyric work uh, I'm pretty useless in that area. <laughs> um, but, like, with the changes, Sam had just been jamming in his room while he was at uni and then came back with this awesome opening riff and we just said, yep, we have to write that straight yeah, and away. Then Joe came up with a 
pretty sweet drum beat go over the Thank top you. and I did all the twiddly bits it, it's kind of made me think this is something I thought of a while ago I would like to follow somebody through a, a, a songwriting process because I think the process is fascinating because it works different with different bands somebody has an idea somebody plays a riff and then suddenly you've got a song <laughs> it, it, you know cause yeah. for a lot of people that's kind of a, a bit of a mystery isn't it it's kind of weird how everything really comes together yeah. yes what me and Sam like doing is we like to write the choruses first and the chords because then that's half the song done as we see because we find <laughs> yeah, writing yeah, yeah. instruments like they come really naturally because Harry and Brandon are really good at their theory work but uh, like the lyrics are the hard part for us changes took us about an hour and a half to write whereas some songs take us two three days to write or two or three sessions to write and we're on it all day well they, you hear some bands say you know exactly you do one song in an hour and another might take a couple of days it's just the way it is I guess yeah it's just yeah. how easy it works and what ideas you have coming into the writing session but what about you following now? You talked about obviously you need to get I think twenty five people minimum or something uh, the, the shed on, yeah, on, twenty, on, on, yeah. yeah, something like that, isn't it? But you've obviously got a bit of a following now, we think. Yeah, twenty five people shouldn't be a problem for us, but obviously we're trying to get as many people as we possibly can to come down and watch us, cause, so the atmosphere can be as big as possible. But I guess with other bands being on on the night, I think you you mentioned somebody earlier that's also on on Friday. Didn't yeah, you? we mentioned uh, our old guitarist uh, Joe Connor. He's doing yeah. in a acoustic. So obviously other people are going to bring audiences as well. And so sometimes if you go down and see one act, you want to see the others, so that helps. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be a lot. Of different talents there that night we're just hoping that the judges think that we're good enough to go through for the next year well given what happened uh, you know uh, this year i'm pretty sure that might happen we'll try our very very best and harry will go extra mental <laughs> i just don't know, i'm hoping because i've been asked in the past to judge but i don't know whether i'm going to be there this week Possibly. Oh, that'd be good if you were. I don't know. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> if you can make it, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Just see me afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this song changes. So tell me what this is about. Well, Har I think Harry should take this. Yeah. Well, Harry, okay. Um, so, it, I think we wrote this a uh, couple of weeks into um, our first year at uh, university. Um, yeah, we just, as I said uh, before, Sam came back with this really good riff. And then um, we just sat down, uh, sort of discussed what sort of topics we uh, wanted to write about. And in the end, um, it was sort of my experience of uh, university. Cause a lot of... Um, a lot of people uh, seem to go to uni and come back and say, oh, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant, really enjoyed it, met all these people. But, like, for me, first night, um, it was it was really good, but, like, I found myself uh, finding it hard to go and talk to people. I was, like, just sat in my room listening to music, but then, like, second night... And you can only do that for so long, can't yeah, you? Yeah, and then, sort of, second night, met a few people, and then from then on, you know... And, Best friends, uh, and so. it kind of says it in the title, doesn't it? Changes. Yeah. Not always easy, is it? Uh, no. That's true. Okay, well, thanks very much for coming in, guys. I hope it goes well on Friday. I'll give Muzz a, a, a bell, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Say, e just, email. Oh, email. I should probably end up turning up anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Uh, then. If I'm standing at front jumping up and down, then don't, don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you can join okay. my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, beneath the lights and changes, thanks very much for coming in, guys. Cheers. my mind as I think of what to say oh why is it so easy to hide it all the way
Inside my head, and all is simply done. Well, I met the uh, musician uh, Saturday night. The Fury supporting uh, Scam. Scam's uh, launching their album. Uh, we spoke last, didn't we? At, uh, after your gig at uh, Glaston Budget. So. How do you reflect on that now? It seems like ages ago, doesn't it? It was a long time ago. Yeah, Glaston Budget was good. It was the first time um, we'd ever done a cover set. The two sets. So when you saw us, we played some of our own stuff, and then we went off later on in the day and did a cover set. And then, funnily enough, our cover set was probably better than our own stuff, yeah. wasn't it? But it was good. It was really good. And uh, supporting Scam, that's quite good for you as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's quite big. Like, you seem very no, sure. No, no, I'm I'm not good at these interview things. But no, it was really it's really good. Um, we're close mates with them because uh, our drummer Neil, was, his brother was Steve, who's obviously this singer of Scam, and it's great to be able to be play this kind of event with them. So, it's yeah. going to draw a crowd for you as well. I mean, that's what you want. Is that obviously your fans are a mix of theirs as well? Yeah, we pl we play back when there's more people. We play better. If there's less people, we'll we'll play good. But when there's more people, we get more energetic and play. We're up for it. So. <laughs> and as far as uh, promoting uh, stuff at the moment, you you did some stuff I played on the radio years ago. Are you doing much new stuff at the moment? Would you say? Um, we've got one song that we we're recording today actually. So yeah, yeah. we've. Have you got a name for it yet? All uh, into the ocean. Wow. <laughs> are you having a debate about it? Are you? Uh, no, we've, that's the name. Yeah. Oh, that is going to be the name. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought name that. I thought you just made that up on the no, spot. No, 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 <laughs> no, that is the name. Yeah. Let's talk. So yeah. He so, writes the lyrics, so he's got the so name. So is that is that kind of a, a, a single coming out pre-album or something? What are you going to do? Um, with that? I'm not sure. Just to be the start honest. of just a new album. Neil knows more than anything. Yeah. Okay, Neil, go on. You you can answer the question. We're kind of going on a bit of a hiatus at the minute because hiatus because Joe's moved to London, so we're not really sure what the future of this band is so this is the only song that we haven't recorded so we recorded it today and we're just going to put it out and release as a single yeah. if people want to download it they can so it'll probably be out within a month and then after that who knows really it's just see what we can do with Joe living in London because we don't really want to replace him you know so does that uh, mean that you've got to kind of pick your gigs a little bit more carefully then? Do you think? I think so, yeah. I mean, we've, we've kind of agreed just to see what we get offered. And I mean, you know... We Chance to play in London? Well, yeah, if, if Joe can get us something. <laughs> okay. But um, it's just, obviously, it's going to be difficult because we can't practice and stuff. So we might start some separate projects like, you know, without Joe or whatever. And then we keep Furies going in the background. If people still want us to play, then we'll play. Yeah, it's one of those things that people do move around. A lot of young bands, obviously, people go into college and they have to get back together when they can. And kind of that happens, doesn't it? Mm, I mean, it's hard. We've been going for five years and we've been through loads of different lineups, and it's kind of come to the point now where we don't really want to go through it again, yeah, getting yeah, new people. Yeah. So that's it, really. We'll just see what happens from there. You have to pay for his train fare. Yeah, every week. <laughs> That's uh, part of the deal that was, right? Nate, you were just talking about um, a new single, which we'll get to here at some point in the future, but you picked a track for me to play now. Uh, yeah, well, we thought we'd uh, let you play one of your favourite songs of our old stuff, which is Shut Me Out. So if, yeah, you, if like you could that. play that, that would be brilliant. OK, thanks very much. I'll go and find the scan lads now. Thank you. Thank you. Right. No more confusion. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>
Well, that's uh, Holy City uh, from a Scam. Good to be uh, back with the boys outside the musician uh, for their official album uh, launch. And kind of interesting that me and Kevin Gorn have got back together here on Hermitage FM because it was the Scam boys that uh, introduced me to Kevin. How long ago was that? It's got to be about two, two years, years ago, ago now, something like that. It, uh, it came about because we came and did your show. That's right. And obviously we knew Kev from the scene and he'd come down and uh, interviewed us a few times for uh, Midlands or Leicester, Leicestershire Arts. Arts in Leicester. Oh, yeah. 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 That's you got that in the end, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and um, I remember you talking to me on, on the station about wanting someone that was like in, into the scene and that could go to gigs and stuff, and it just seemed like the best, the best accompaniment for the two of you, you know. That's right, and then he went on to do another radio station, and I've moved, so we're we're back together, which is good. You stayed together, and uh, you're, you're pretty established now. Does it kind of feel that way as well? I suppose so, but we've been doing it a long time, so yeah, it's established is a word you could use. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I last saw you at Glastonbury, and I, I suppose I was a bit surprised you were on the Icon stage because, although that sounds good, there are, are much bigger stages, and we've been talking mm. before this that perhaps you know the big top is where you probably need to be, or even the you played the main stage before as well. I mean. We played the main stage a few years back. We played the big top a few times, didn't we? We played nine years in total, which makes me feel very old. But yeah, we'll have a word with Moz, make sure he gets us on the big top stage next year, or I won't play. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and have a word as well. Uh, I'm, I don't think I spoke to the drummer before because I spoke to these guys, but you, you've always been left in the background. I suppose that's what, what drummers do. But uh, tell us about the middle name X-Ray, how that came about. Um, that's just a nickname that Matt gave me from the first day I joined the band. Sort of auditioned and he said, uh, you, need, you need a proper rock and roll drummer's name. So he gave me X-Ray and thankfully that one stuck because the other choice was Desiree and it, that, that just doesn't quite suit me so yeah I'm, I'm glad X-Ray stuck rather than Desiree but it's good to be playing these sort of local gigs as well isn't it I think because obviously you've got a big crowd down here as well uh, we, yeah we love local gigs I mean the hometown shows are always the good one it's, it's a different kind of atmosphere because we know a lot of people that have come down and these are people that have followed us for years and it, it's, it's, it's almost like a you know it's our little thing it's our little community and the people come down pay the, pay the money to watch us and then we try and give them the best show that we can. Now, me and Kevin were talking about the album, and he, he thinks you've changed because Peacemaker, uh, he talked about, and Holy City. Is this a kind of change in direction title-wise, or have you mellowed a bit? I'm not sure. I, I would have didn't think we would have mellowed anyway. I think um, writing-wise, we've, we've obviously matured a little bit. Um, you know, when you start out and you're a bit younger, you write songs about... Um, about having sex with birds and getting drunk yeah but yeah. but uh we're starting to write songs about bigger issues i suppose like, but... like uh, staying sober <laughs> but it was a weird thing when we when we put the album together if i'm in all honesty we we just start writing and, and we don't it, it never really stops and we're writing now um even though the album's only just really come out you know it's always what we're doing um and when we started putting the album together and putting the songs together, even though they've all got very different themes within each individual song, um, all of them are about some sort of conflict, whether it's a conflict with uh, a fictional conflict, like The Prince is about a fictional conflict with uh, a member of the royal family. and uh, uh, That bloody Prince Charles. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's actually not what the song's about, but OK. Uh, uh, OK. <laughs> and... Uh, the Wire is about, uh, uh, you know, uh, reflecting upon yourself and about what, whether you, whether or not you're going to leave your mark once you're done and buried and that kind of thing. Holy City about the, uh, the war in Israel, which it's got Matt, pretty, Matt wrote that one. It's got pretty bad, isn't it? We noticed since we released that song, it's got pretty yes, bad in uh, Israel. So, yeah, hopefully they just all calm down and listen to that song. Yeah. But the other thing I'd like to get in there is we write songs that we like. So like Steve said we're always writing so the change like a change in direction or something that's mellowed is, is never really of relevance to us because we just write songs that we like and, and it's, it's as not, simple as that really. it's not thought about is no, it not we, we've not sat down and decided to do it any kind of change of direction it's just how the song's turned out at this particular time and as you say it's an ongoing process so you're already kind of writing the next album as you go along sort of thing is, it? is that the way it works exactly I mean um, Matt told me off because Ray, Ray recently um, uh, hurt himself a sporting injury 
Oh, Could, yes, what was that? Uh, I tore my shoulder playing cricket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, so, is that hitting the ball? Yeah. No, throw, I can't, I I can't bat to the, save my life. Yeah, I was bowling and uh, I'm, get, I'm getting too old, basically. Uh, okay. So, But it's nothing rock and roll, just a standard cricket yeah. injury. So He had to take a month, month off drumming uh, to let himself recuperate. And um, so we... And then building up to this tour, we knew we had to get in and practice, so we asked the if he was coming down. He said he'd going to come down and try and run through a set. And uh, I just couldn't resist, so like, even though he was the first one back after he was supposed to be taking a rest, I was like, I've got, I've got a couple of songs for you. <laughs> and uh, you know, we started jamming out a couple of new licks and some, some new melodies and things like that. Yeah, was it called On the Boundary then or something in the song? <laughs> <laughs> You'd call it something like that, couldn't you? That was a sporting theme for, the, the, slip, for the, yeah. the new album, yeah, that sort of thing. Well, I'm sure you'll enjoy the gig tonight. Uh, Fury's in support, obviously I saw them at, on the same stage at uh, Glastonbury. I know they're, they're losing their drummer who's going down south, but a lot of young bands do have to cope with colleges and people moving, don't they? Yeah, definitely. It's always hard to find fellow musicians that have got the same vision as well. You know, there's a lot of inter-band arguments and different, you know, changing directions. We've always been quite lucky with that. You know, we kind of hate each other, but at the same time get on really well. <laughs> yeah, well that, we, we spend the vast amount of time in a tour van. So I think if we didn't like each other, the band yeah. wouldn't have lasted this long. Who so. gets the most jip then? I don't know, really. We all get a bit of jip, <laughs> don't we? I, I, I'm like Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, sometimes I'm really nice, other times I'm just an arsehole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah. We'll let that go, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, have, have a good time tonight. I think that's what it's about for you, isn't it? You've got a good crowd, you can enjoy it. Yeah. Things, things like tonight are just great. Um, you know, without getting too sentimental, all these people have come down to see us play, and that's why that's why you're in a band. That's the reason why you do it for live shows and for and you hope people are going to be into it and come down and see. Actually, do you remember your first gig? What was your first gig like? Do you remember? First gig ever was Scam. Or yeah, first yeah. gig ever. First gig ever was Scam. When was it? It was about. Yeah. I know. A, it's been a long time. I, I remember. Yeah. 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 Peace, yeah. Peace yeah. festival. It was. Um, <laughs> yeah. We, we, yeah, we we formed Scam. Uh, with a with a different drummer but we never actually played any shows and then we got Ray in um, really early doors and we had a small festival slot booked it was in town in yeah. Leicester town I think it was something to do with gun crime wasn't it like yeah. anti-gun yeah. crime yeah. festival yeah. Um, and we uh, we had a slot for four songs and that was the first time the three of us had ever ever performed together and uh, it was like a baptism, baptism of fire for Ray, because even though we'd practiced, and I'd said to him, oh, you know, in this song, I might take a little bit of an extended solo here, <laughs> and I might, I might talk to the crowd at this point. <clears throat> you can't really prepare. And then by the time we actually started playing, and um, I, like, disappeared into the cl- crowd for 15 minutes, and uh, he just had to keep it going with Matt giving him the wink <laughs> to, to bring, bring him in on time. So, OK, we're going to play The Y. Just remind us what this song is about again. The Wire is about reflecting upon your life and um, thinking about whether or not you're going to leave your mark on the world once you've done and dusted. Okay, I'm sure you're going to leave your mark tonight. Enjoy it, guys. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.
about You're the only one who knows You love me down to the bone You're the only one who knows Goodbye is hard to say Each year we slip away A little bit further A little bit faster And your heart will gently drain As I pull this cord away A little bit harder A little bit harder You're holding on with open arms And now I've grown you love me Right down to the bone To the bone To the bone To the bone Goodbye is hard to say Each year we slip away A little bit further A little bit faster And your heart will gently drain As I pull this cord away A little bit harder A little bit harder Well, that's uh, Harley then from uh, Elizabeth Cornish. You may have heard that at the end of my show uh, last week. I'm with her now uh, to talk about the gig at The Musician. And as we're recording this, it would be tonight as we're talking. But uh, good to see you, uh, Elizabeth. I was trying to remember last time we spoke, but it was a, a few years ago, I think, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was a few years ago. Um, it must have been at Summer Sunday about two years ago now. So, yeah, it's good to be on the show, though. Yeah, OK, nice to have you as well. Um, uh, the album, obviously, it's been out for a little while this year, but it, it took what I, I was reading about six years to put together. So uh, just talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, so I started writing a lot of the songs that are on the album kind of when I was 18, before I came to university, and that's how I ended up in Leicester, really. I applied to come to university here, and I sort of started gigging and growing my band up. So kind of when I was studying I didn't really have the time to actually put towards the music which is why I've been writing songs but didn't have the time to record so it's since I graduated I've actually put the album together got down into the studio and put that together so it was really nice to bring all those songs from over those years and kind of put them all on one album um, so that came out in March um, and it's been it's been received really well so I'm really pleased with that. Yeah it's good quality recording you'll be pleased with that but the songs have got uh, kind of different themes to them, haven't they? Yeah, a lot of them about 
that feeling of well as the album's titled displaced so it's about feeling kind of torn between places because I've moved around quite a lot um, throughout my lifetime um, and I think a lot of the songs are really about just leaving people behind about kind of never feeling like you're settled in one place at one time so a lot of it's about that obviously it's the kind of your love stories in there and those sorts of things of course um and also that feeling of really trying to find yourself, not just in terms of like spatially where you're where you're settled, but actually that kind of inner finding yourself and growing up and kind of becoming an adult. So a lot of the songs are about that. It's particularly harder. Um, that one I wrote about leaving home. That's kind of for my mum really. And uh, the title of that displays. I watched the video of that, which uh, you're telling me is your sister's in it. Now she's kind of smoking a cigarette with. Uh, kind of travel scenes in the background from going from place to place. I, I kind of get that, but um, what was the inspiration behind doing it that way? Um, my sister, she's she's made both of my videos, so she made the one for Harder as well, and I just love the style of the way she makes a video and the, kind of the sceneries that she gets in there. Uh, and I kind of just gave her creative license on it, really. Uh, I wanted to, to have that opportunity to make something. Um, and... I'm, I'm not a smoker myself, so I can't say I agree with it, and I've kind of given her a talking to about that in the past. Good. Um, but she told me, you know, from her perspective, it's kind of about feeling a little bit lost, and that you're, she was, you're like, you know, you're thinking about things, and you're just not feeling kind of like completely yourself. Mm. So that's what, um, that's her kind of creative take on it. And she does disconcertingly stare straight at you occasionally as well. <laughs> yeah, she's got a bit of an evil glare sometimes, I think. <laughs> Um, uh, but what about gig-wise? Um, I think Simon says you were, you were at that. You've been gigging fairly regularly, haven't you? Yeah, I feel like I've been gigging like every week this summer, which has been brilliant. Um, I, I'd have to say, I think Simon says was just the most amazing experience. I think that was probably one of my favourite festivals. Just the crowd were just absolutely brilliant. It had such a good, relaxed vibe the whole festival. Partly, probably because of the weather. Um, it's absolutely beautiful weather, but. It was great to see a lot of like Leicester's local acts together in one place. Um, yeah, that's how it's moved on, really, from Summer Sunday. It's become much more a local festival, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think that was quite nice. It did, I don't think it actually needed any really, really famous acts because people just want to go out, enjoy, enjoy that festival feeling and see some new music. And I think it was a good opportunity to showcase new music. Like, there were people in the tent that you know probably had never seen me before, but because they've come out to this... Yeah. The festival that brings people together um, I think it really allowed you know a new crowd to come and see my music so it was good and in a way this gig at the musician uh, tonight as we're speaking is a bit different because people have to kind of make the effort to come so it's a, a kind of a different sort of gig isn't it yeah it is I think this this type of gig is kind of for those people that have already heard of heard of me um, it's a chance for them to come down and just sort of see it in a more intimate setting than a festival um, and you know see some, some new acts as well um, so yeah and then you've got a gig I think a week after in London as well that's quite exciting isn't it I, I do um, that'll be my first gig in London so um, I'm playing at the Abbey Tavern and that's kind of where um, uh, Newton Faulkner has played in the past um, I think Lucy Rose has played there so some quite famous art artists and they record your set live so I'm quite excited about that and what about influences? I think the, the name of David Gray kind of came up on your website a little bit. Was that, that he a bit of an inspiration? Yeah, David Gray, I think, is probably the reason that I sort of picked up the guitar. Um, I remember hearing Babylon when I was about 11 or 12 years old and just thinking, oh, what a brilliant song and just loving that his, like his album White Ladder and just really inspired me. And I think a lot of that has kind of... Um, made its way into my songs um, kind of I suppose they're sort of sad songs but have that sort of element of hope in them as well okay and uh, what about the next album it's not going to take another six years is no, it no hopefully not <laughs> Start, have you already got some new yeah, songs yeah I've started writing some new songs um, and I've put some time aside to actually concentrate on writing those 
so that's what I'm hoping to do over the next couple of months really get some stuff done and recorded how would you kind of evaluate the, the scene in Leicester because obviously we've got it's been the festival season lots going on as well but it seems pretty healthy doesn't it you? I think it does because I've, I've you know been visiting friends and family around the country this summer and you go to other places and I think it's a lot more difficult to get into the music scene and also um, they, they tend to have quite a lot of um, typical bands on but not as much acoustic music and I'd say Leicester is quite a niche spot for mm. acoustic music um, and there's some excellent bands and talent and it's just yeah, really good to be part of it. And you've had some good reviews of your album as well I know that's pleased you're looking at your website. Yes, um, had lots of good reviews. Kind of a really random one from um, someone in Belgium picked up the album, contacted me and said he, you know, he wanted to review it. So that was quite cool um, in a language that I couldn't read. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, some just some brilliant feedback from kind of fa- um, fans all over the place, really. Uh, so yeah. So uh, we're going to play uh, Displaced and the, uh, the title track. If people want to get hold of the album, they can go onto iTunes. I think I found it there anyway, and yeah. uh, or via your website, I guess. Yeah, it's on iTunes, Amazon, or, uh, Spotify, um, and they can also get it on, on Bandcamp. So if they just if, if you just go to www.elizabethcornish.com, you can find it all there. Okay, enjoy the gig tonight. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And uh, here's the song Displaced. Lovely.
Place after place, place after.